we're going to talk about Kruskal's algorithm for a minimum spanning tree. And the reason we're talking about this particular algorithm is it's also going to be a lead into a clustering algorithm that's very, very similar. So first, I just want to remind us what is a minimum spanning tree. We've talked about graphs, uh, trees, um, a tree being a graph without cycles. Uh, OK, and we'll be looking at undirected graphs here. Uh, and we might have a graph here with weighted edges, and a spanning tree would be a subset of the edges, maybe shown in blue, that spans, that connects the entire graph, connects to all the vertices. Uh, a minimum spanning tree would be one that has the lowest cost edge weight altogether when you sum up all the edges. Uh, so we have something here that's close to a minimum spanning tree, but it actually has a really heavy edge here, 12 included. Um, you can actually see that including this 9, if we were to complete the 9, well, that wouldn't add in cycle. We're not a tree anymore. We could add the 9, remove the 12, and it would have a lower cost cycle there. And that, I think, would actually give us a minimum spanning tree for this particular example. Okay, I want to go through and uh, I'll quickly re wave my hands about two different algorithms, Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's algorithm for finding a minimum spanning tree. Uh, then we'll look at Kruskal's algorithm, looking at the code for it, the runtime analysis of the algorithm, and the correctness of the algorithm, um, because it's not entirely obvious. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So first, Prim's algorithm. I'm, I'm just mentioning this uh, mostly because it's sort of the algorithm you might think of if you were to try coming up with this yourself. Uh, if we have this weighted graph here, undirected graph, uh, Prim's algorithm is going to go ahead and you can start anywhere and it says, hey, let's grow the minimum spanning tree, starting from this root here, I guess. And you go through and you can look at all the neighbors and it says, hey, find the cheapest neighbor that's not already in the graph and add that to my tree. Okay, add that to this minimum spanning tree we're building up. I'll look at the new edges we consider and it goes on uh, technical details. It keeps a priority queue of all the nearby edges, all edges that are uh, going out of the nodes in the tree. Uh, we, the only thing we don't care about are nodes that are between, so we're growing this tree more, uh, we don't care about this edge here uh, between node 3 and node 6. We don't want to add that. We wouldn't be a tree anymore and so we, we consider it and then we say, no, don't use that one. Look at the next cheapest edge. Oh, that also keeps us within the tree. Look at the next cheapest edge that brings us, that adds a new node to the tree we're growing. And we add that and so on. So you can go through and do this. This particular example, it doesn't look very tree-like as one big, big long snake, but um, that's Prim's algorithm. Okay, fair enough. Uh, it's a greedy algorithm. It goes by just saying, hey, what's the cheapest edge I can add right now that could be a contender? Uh, and uses that. So we can go here, let's do it. Kruskal's algorithm uh, starts a little bit differently. It starts by growing a forest. Rather than have one tree that we grow and keep adding on to, we have a forest of many trees, and we go and uh, look at the cheapest edge in the entire graph and grow that. Let's look at a few things. Uh, we have one edge that's going to end up in our minimum standing tree here, another edge over here that was relatively cheap. We're going to add that one. Uh, and we can go and go back, might grow our first tree a little bit, uh, come over here. We have a third tree growing on. And eventually we go and we might join two entire trees, like we do here. Uh, and our forest of individual trees is going to grow together until we get one big spanning tree. And our criterion is, hey, look at the cheapest edge in the entire graph that will, uh, that, that will not form a cycle. That will, uh, and go ahead and grow that. And you know, I should say that um, really when we do this, when we start out, we consider the entire, uh, for, the, the entire graph to be a forest of singleton trees. That is, uh, even before we started, and we go back, this particular example gives us the same, um, same spanning tree that 
Prim's algorithm gave. Uh, note, by the way, uh, there can be more than one spanning tree for a given graph um, in general. So we'll talk about a minimum spanning tree, not the minimum spanning tree. And this uh, visualgo.net or visualgo.net um, has some, I have a link in the notes to that. So uh, let me just point out that again, when we started out, at this point, I already think of us as having a forest of trees that are all a single node big. So even when we go and look at our very first edge that happened to be length eight here, and we, at this point, we were already adding an edge that was merging two existing trees. That's how I go ahead and look at that. So that's just a special case of, of saying, hey, find the cheapest edge, merge the two, the cheapest edge that goes between two trees that weren't already connected, and then add that edge to join those two trees. Okay. Um, so Prim's algorithm needed a fancy uh, priority queue to get really good performance if you really want to eke all the performance out of it. Uh, we don't really need that for minimum spanning tree so much. Uh, if we have the list of all the edges sorted to start with, that's the order that we consider the edges in. Look at the cheapest edge, the next cheapest edge, the next cheapest edge. What we do need a fancy data structure for is to be able to quickly tell, hey, node 8 and node 2, are those part of the same tree or not? And that's union fine, which we talked about earlier. Just the disjoint, sorry, disjoint union abstract data type that supports the union and find. And this is the poster child for, for that algorithm. Um, so just remembering uh, union find says, hey, you have a bunch of uh, di disjoint sets, and then you can union them. You can merge two of the sets. That's exactly what we're doing with these trees. We have these disjoint trees, and then every now and then we join two trees. Uh, and it can very quickly find a represent representative element of the set. So give me any element of the set and it'll say, oh yeah, that's the set that also contains node two or whatever. And any node in, in the set that you ask about, it'll say, oh, you're in the set that contains node two. And that node two is constant until you change the, the set. Um, that's exactly what we want. Hey, are node seven and node uh, three in the same tree? What is seven's representative element? It's in the set whose representative element is two. What is three's representative element? Oh, it's in the set that is, well, if it says set containing node two, I know they're together. And if it says the set containing node 12, then it's not, those two trees are separate and we can union them. So let's go and look at some code. Okay. Uh, so this is going to go through. It's not real Scala code here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that I have, uh, I have vertices, I have edges. All I care about an edge that is a pair of vertices. Uh, and there's a weight between them. OK. So da, 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 da. Uh, what do we want to do here? This is, I'll call this function MST Kruskal. It's going to take in a set of vertices, V, an edge set, E, and return a set of edges. That's my tree. Um, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep all the forests. Okay, I'm going to make, and initially I'm going to say I have a forest of very small trees. Every tree is a single node. Uh, take every node of V uh, and make a new set out of that. So I'm going to map the set constructor onto that. Uh, that set of one node uh, is going to be one of my trees, and I have a whole bunch of them. We call a bunch of trees a forest. Okay, great. Um, and again, I'm using sort of somewhat made up syntax here, a blend of Scala and Java 8 and whatever I want to write. Um, then we have the edges to consider. Okay, so, and these are gonna be all the edges by weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and sort the set. Uh, it gives me back a list, uh, gives me back a list of edges. Uh, and I'm gonna sort it by, the key is gonna be, hey, the weight method within class. Uh, Edge. I guess that should be edge colon colon w if I'm if I'm being Java-ish in my names. Okay, great. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and set up the my uh, tree so far, my entire set of edges. Um, gosh, do I need that? Is that going to come for free out of my forest? Yeah, this will be the edges that I add to my tree. So. Uh, my forest is going to grow into one tree. I'm keeping track of this uh, 
forest as the set of vertices in each tree, and then I'm going to figure out which edges did I add. That's really what I want to know. If I just know which edges I added, that's what I'm going to be my final answer that I'm going to return at the very beginning. Okay, so I named my variable mystery science theater so far, uh, minimum spanning tree so far. Okay, so now what do we do? We keep going through the loop uh, while, I guess while there's more edges to consider. Uh, can go ahead and try that. Uh, while edges to consider uh, is empty, that's sort of the Java-ish thing. Uh, until the set is empty, we're going to keep and do what? We're going to go ahead and grab the edges to consider. Remember that was a list. I'm going to go ahead and take the car of that list, or the, the first element in that list. Um, I'll mutate the remaining list. Okay. Uh, and I'll go ahead and do this. Uh, now here's the problem. I don't want to grab an edge that's between two uh, that are both in the same tree. Okay, So sometimes I'm going to uh, look at the next cheapest edge. Sometimes the edge is between two nodes that are already in the same tree. I don't want to consider that in a minimum spanning tree. In fact, it would be adding a cycle and I wouldn't have a, a tree anymore. So I want to keep doing this. I want to keep grabbing the edges to consider and I'm going to uh, say something uh, do while. I hardly ever use do whiles. Do this. Uh, sorry, do this until, and what is my condition? Um, hey, I want to make sure that the edge doesn't have both sides in the same set. So my, what are my two edges? E dot V1 and E dot V2. I call, those are the two fields inside my edge, and I want to make sure those are in the in different sets in the forest. So, um, in the same set of forest, give me that forest, give me this vertex, that vertex, um, and go ahead and repeat that. So, great. So grab an edge, grab an edge until it's not an edge both ends of the same tree. Oh, great, now I have an edge that spans two trees, and I can go ahead and add that to my minimum spanning tree so far. Um, and I can go ahead and my union find, I need to tell my forest these two trees have merged. Um, so I don't know how I want to, I want to be object oriented or not, but I'll say, hey, for this particular forest, union uh, e dot, v1 and e dot v2. There we are. Okay, and that's pretty much my loop. Uh, one thing that bothers me about this loop though is this end condition until the list is empty and then I keep popping things off. Um, gosh, well first of all, uh, what if I am popping things off and there's all the remaining edges are between existing trees. Uh, in fact, that's definitely going to happen when I do have a full spanning tree, but I haven't looked at the last few edges yet. So let's go fix that. Let's, no, no, I use this non-standard until loop. You can rewrite that as a while loop. Um, and here's a better way of doing it. it has next. We'll use an iterator syntax here. Um, and here's what we'll say, while edges to consider has next and not forest.size equal equal one. Uh, when our forest gets down to be a single tree, we're done. And we don't need, there might be the few leftover edges, but we don't actually need to consider them. And then what we can do in here, get rid of that nested loop here, do something more standard like edges to consider next there, uh, and then have uh, that if statement. If they're in the same tree, then we'll go ahead and do that. Sorry, not in the same tree. So, da, 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 da. if not forest.in same set of e dot e1, e dot e2. Okay. Now we can go ahead and do this, and I can actually throw in this last line here that I added off screen. Um, and after the loop ends, I can double check, hey, did I end because I got down to a single component? Um, 
if after getting out through the loop I have more than one component, then the graph wasn't connected and I can throw an exception. I guess really I could phrase my code as saying, hey, I'm going to return the uh, minimum spanning, you know, the largest possible minimum spanning forest, something like that. Um, and that way I'm trying to cover myself for the case when they gave me a non-connected graph. Probably they shouldn't be doing that and would want to know about it. At any rate, uh, I'm not going to worry about the design issue there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and have this, this code here. Okay, so this is a greedy algorithm. You just go along and, hey, grab the next edge that is a, a light edge and helps us make progress. Is this correct? Does this give a minimum spanning tree? It's not at all obvious. I mean, it's plausible, but it's not at all obvious that it really does give a globally minimum spanning tree. So we'll argue about that in the next video.